السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اسمي دكتور مان العباسي مدرس في كلية الطب جامعة المستنصرية أنا سوف أقدم لكم محاضرات إن شاء الله في موضوع اسمه Anatomy of the Dwelling So those series of lectures will be divided according to the sections in your textbooks called Grace Anatomy for Students. And then we will start having each part of those um, sections or chapters uh, with separated videos. I will subdivide the videos into short videos so that you can catch with me and then it will be easy to watch every time. I will start describing the anatomy of the lower limb and we will talk about the conceptual overview of the structure, the general structure, and then we will start now, we will start with a general introduction. Now, first of all, you should know that the lower limb is directly linked to the axial skeleton by a joint called the sacroiliac joint. And those are like two important joints, two very thick, strong joints, have a strong ligament that link the pelvic bones to the sacrum. So this wide, uh, like three bones here coming together to form the hip bone, and this is uh, the, called the ilium, the pubic, and the ischium. And those connected together to form one bone here is called the hip bone. And the hip bone will be connected to the sacrum by the sacroiliac joint, and that on the other side, that will form the pelvis. Now, this is... Uh, the lower limb here is separated from structures. First of all is the abdomen. So you have the abdomen anterior and lateral. You have posteriorly is the back and the muscles of the back. And inferiorly you have the perineum. And perineum is the sexual region of the, uh, of the body. Now if you look anteriorly and, or anterior laterally, you have like um, a tubercle here. It's called the pubic tubercle. So if you start from this tubercle and draw a line to attach to another tubercle here, it's called the anterior superior iliac spine. Both of those tubercles are palpable, so you can feel them on your body and on the others. There is a ligament connecting those two important landmarks called the inguinal ligament. And then you continue with your line through the uh, curvy of the ilium, which is called the iliac crest. And then uh, continuing uh, posteriorly and superiorly and uh, and then to the uh, anterior uh, like uh, to the posterior superior iliac spine that's uh, is actually that says the like separate this uh, imaginary line starting from the pubic tubercle to the posterior superior iliac spine that will separate the lower limb from the anterior and lateral abdominal wall now, if you, if you continue with your line from the posterior superior iliac spine and then along the dorsolateral surface of the sacrum, so laterally and dorsally to the sacrum, and then to the coccyx, uh, posteriorly as well, and that will separate the lower limb from the muscles of the back. Now, the last one is when you have a, 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 like a, a joining line starting from the Sacrotuberous ligament is a very thick ligament here, starting from the lateral level and anterior of the sacrum to the uh, tubricity of the ischium, to the ischia tubricity here, and then you have the ischia brachymus, and then the pubic symphysis, and that will separate the limb. Like so, so it will be like this, and that will separate the lower limb uh, from the perineum. Of course, we can divide the lower limb into regions. So we will start with the first region here. This is called the gluteal region. And this gluteal region is a posterior lateral region. It lies between the iliac crest, okay, and that's as like superiorly. And then there is a fold of skin called the gluteal fold, the gluteal fold. And that defines the lower limit of the buttocks. Now, the other part is called the thigh. And of course, we, we have anterior and a posterior of the thigh. Anterior of the thigh is larger than the posterior of the thigh. It is connecting the inguinal ligament that we mentioned earlier 
with the to the up to the knee joint and it is uh, just like uh, inferior to the middle third of the inguinal ligament and the posterior thigh is posterior between the gluteal fold and the knees so the posterior thigh is between the gluteal fold and the knee the anterior thigh is between the knee and the inguinal ligament and then you have the leg of course there's uh, two views here anterior view posterior view and the leg is between the knee and the ankle joint and and the most distal part is called the uh, foot, and uh, that's this distal to the ankle joint. There is an important, <clears throat> like, spaces here. So three spaces, very important. So we will start with the uh, proximal one, and that's called the femoral triangle. And those are, the, like, uh, if you like, those are areas of a transition and there are structures passing from region to region so uh, for the femoral triangle here and the femoral triangle is like a, a, a pyramid shape is formed by muscles so the floor here is muscles we will describe them later and of course there is the medial wall and the lateral wall and uh, the the base of this pyramid is inguinal ligament so that's uh, there are some structures passing from the pelvis to the lower limb so this is the transition here so we have very important structure here. Uh, medially is a vein called femoral vein. In the middle, there is an artery called the femoral artery. And, and the most lateral is the nerve, which is called the femoral nerve. And that's uh, one of the important nerves that can supply the anterior part of the thigh and uh, part of the lateral part of the thigh. The other fossa here is where, is, uh, uh, again, it is, uh, it is a transition between the thigh and the leg. So many important structures like nerves, vessels, lymphatics as well is passing in this transition line. And this is a diamond shaped uh, fossa called the popliteal fossa. It is, most por it is posterior rather than anterior. Although you are seeing an anterior view, but it is a posterior fossa. And of course, the, uh, if we go more distal here, we can see that um, there are um, most of the uh, major vessels, nerves that supply the foot here and the sole of the foot, the of the foot, with the flexors, with the flexors of the, um, of the foot, is passing through a tunnel, it's called the tarsal tunnel. And the tarsal tunnel here is, uh, is a posterior medial um, uh, groove here. And it is uh, fixed, um, like it's formed by the adjacent bones and the flexor retinaculum that hold those tendons in positions that uh, can act on the foot. That was the end of the first part.